Hi, I'm Jack Cush with Room Now. It's the first day of the meeting. I hope you're enjoying it. I am. This is my report called Best Thing I Saw Today. And you know what? It's not the best thing I saw today, but it certainly made me think a lot. And that's why I'm going to present it to you because it's about practice. Specifically, it's about the issue of preclinical RA and should you use a DMARD or not. Preclinical RA is defined as patients who are at risk because they're first degree relatives, they're ACPA positive, and they have arthralgias, but they don't have swollen joints. Should you treat them? Should you watch them? Should you worry about them? Well, abstract 0481 titled Subclinical Synovitis in Arthralgia, How Often Does It Result in Clinical Arthritis was presented by Cleo Roger from uh, Erasmus, and she had a very interesting report. Actually, what they did was they looked at patients who had subclinical synovitis based on ultrasound in two large cohorts and MRI in another cohort. So these three cohorts, um, 166, 473, you know, it looks like they had almost a thousand patients between them and they followed them out over time to see what would happen to them. Um, their characteristics are about 40 years of age, um, mostly female as you'd expect. They had one to five tender joints, but no swollen joints. They were roughly 14 or 20% ACPA positive. One cohort was 56% ACPA positive. I've talked before and said ACPA positivity significantly increases your risk of progression to um, inflammatory arthritis and then RA. Uh, and they all had some kind of subclinical arthritis, but the number of patients who progressed to inflammatory arthritis within one year was really only about 20%. The question is why and what are you going to do about it? Well, it turns out that the most influential factor here, uh, and they looked at the rate of patients not progressing to inflammatory arthritis. I think they should, most studies have actually looked at the rate of progression to inflammatory arthritis or RA, but they looked at it from the other standpoint. The bottom line is that um, ACPA positivity doubles your risk over ACPA negativity. Um, so the patients who are ACPA positive in all three cohorts had roughly a 45 to 55% chance of progression to inflammatory arthritis within one year. And I think that's the issue here. Um, and since it seems like it's a toss up, even in ACPA positive individuals, the point is, should you treat them or not? In this cohort, they were not treated. That wasn't the point of this particular study. Um, but the authors came out and said that just because you're ACPA positive and because we've proven that you have subclinical synovitis on MR or ultrasound, you don't have clinical inflammatory arthritis until you get clinical inflammatory arthritis because it's still a toss up. So again, I think this goes to, do you treat a lab? No. And do you treat an ultrasound or an MRI? I would say no. They have to have swollen joints that you are convinced of. Progression rates are about 50%, maybe as high as 60% in people who are going to be ACPA positive. You watch them closer. You worry about them a little bit more. You know, the more worried you get, the more you make indecisive decisions like using hydroxychloroquine. Hopefully not methotrexate or biologics. Again, they made the point that DMARD initiation in this cohort would constitute overtreatment. I'm a big fan of overtreating, but I think when you're in, still in the preclinical phase, uh, and that preclinical group of patients who might could get RA, I think you don't need to treat them until they you need to treat them, which is when they have swollen joints. That's it, and tune in for more videos on Room Now.